Hi, uh, I'm Shabazz from Leipzig University. Welcome to the talk. I will be presenting our work on summarizing news editorials. You might have come across long articles with such provocative titles in a newspaper. These are editorials. They are opinionated texts that discuss socially relevant issues, some of which that are controversial, some of which that may not have an immediate resolution. The goal of an editorial is to persuade you, the reader, to take a stance towards a certain topic. They are therefore argumentative by definition. Editorials are an important part of our daily discourse, however, they are not well studied in the context of summarization. Given the abundance of information and the ease of online consumption, automatic summarization is now more important than before. The field of automatic summarization has significantly progressed in the past few years. However, it is still primarily focused on news reports. Let us look at some differences between reports and editorials. The goal of a report is to inform you about the daily events. They are written objectively and mostly contain factual information that describes the event as it occurred. In terms of layout, reports follow an inverted pyramid layout where the most important questions are answered in the top few sentences. In comparison, the goal of an editorial is to persuade you. It is written subjectively and contains many arguments. In terms of layout, it has three main sections, the lead, the body, and the conclusion. The lead introduces the issue tackled by the editorial. The body is where most of the reasoning is developed by providing arguments and enough background. And in the conclusion, the author provides a subjective assessment of the whole situation and may include some suggestions or a call for action. Looking at these differences, one could effectively summarize news reports by just selecting the top few sentences. This property is also seen in many state-of-the-art summarization models that are biased towards the lead position. Applying them directly to summarize editorials may not be ideal. We need a different approach. But what is a good summary of an editorial? In this paper, we tackle this question of what is a high-quality summary of an editorial. We hypothesize that such a summary preserves the core message and the most persuasive segments. It is also structurally similar to the editorial. We approach first by defining what a high-quality summary is, and then we use this definition to collect and qualitatively evaluate our summaries. We make three specific contributions. We propose a unified scheme for annotating and evaluating high-quality summaries, using which we create a corpus of 1,330 summaries that are manually evaluated for quality, and we provide detailed analysis with respect to summary structure, summary quality, and its argumentation. Let us look at the anatomy of an editorial. Given this three-part layout of lead body conclusion, an editorial is composed of a sequence of argumentative discourse units. These can be broadly classified into two types, thesis and justification. The thesis is the core message of the editorial, which states a topic and the stance towards this topic. The justifications that follow try to support these theses and try to persuade the reader. One could also look at a more fine-grained structure in terms of evidence types, where each of the argumentative discourse units provides evidence in various forms. Let me show you an example. The first type is an anecdote, which provides evidence by stating the first-hand experience of the author. The second is assumption, which is mostly an opinion or judgment provided by the author, which must be supported by other evidence in order to be accepted by readers. Then we have common ground, which is a self-evident fact, which is accepted by most people without much evidence. Then we have statistics, which are results of qualitative studies and quantitative studies performed by institutions. Then we have testimony, which is an external proposition made by an expert or a witness. So one could see how, in how intricate an editorial is and how different units provide evidence in different forms. Given this overall structure, it is possible that some justifications are more persuasive than the others. So, to summarize an editorial, we hypothesize that the summary preserves the thesis as well as these most persuasive segments. However, since we are aiming for a high-quality summary, we need to first define what a high-quality summary is. We look at related work on argument quality assessment to establish such definition. 
we primarily derive a list of quality dimensions that a high quality summary should have. The first of which is thesis indicativeness, which means the summary should explicitly contain the thesis if possible, or at least the statements that indicate this thesis. Then we have persuasiveness, which means the summary should be persuasive. Then we have reasonableness, which means the summary should contain sufficient justification in order to help the audience reach the thesis and also rebut any counter arguments to it. Then we have conciseness and then we have self-containedness. The last two properties are properties of summarization in general, which means the summary is shorter than the editorial. However, it is understandable without needing many additional resources and is self-contained. Using these list of dimensions, we now move to our summary creation. We show an editorial to five annotators. We ask them to label each of the segments as either thesis or justification. As our data source, we chose the editorial's corpus from Al Khatib and others because of its evidence types labels. This allows us to analyze the argumentativeness of our summaries in more detail. We removed short editorials and we fixed the summary length to 20%. We also allowed up to two thesis segments per summary. For evaluation, we qualitatively evaluated all dimensions except conciseness. Each summary was evaluated by three workers on a four-point Likert scale. We showed only the title of the editorial alongside each summary. We did this for two reasons. The first is to reduce the cognitive effort required by workers to read the editorial and then to read the summaries and then to judge them. The second is that on manual inspection we found that each title sufficiently indicates what the editorial will be about. This allows us to also indirectly evaluate the thesis indicativeness of the summary and if the summary is relevant to an editorial with this title. And we label a summary as high quality according to majority vote if it has at least three of the four quality dimensions listed above. With all of these data, we perform several analysis and I present some key findings from this. The first is about thesis and justification. We found out that majority of the thesis segments come from the lead, while majority of the justifications are from the body. Most of the editorials in our data source, in fact, introduce the topic in the lead section. However, according to our definition, just selecting the thesis is not sufficient for a high quality summary. It should also be sufficiently justified. This is where we see the three part layout of the editorials also reflected in the summaries where we have specific contributions from each of the discourse part, lead, body, and conclusion. We also found out that high quality summaries have more third party evidence in the form of statistic and testimony evidence types. This is an interesting observation because in news report summarization, such numbers or external propositions can be seen as additional information that need not be in a summary. However, for editorials, this does not seem to be the case. In terms of dimensions, we found out that reasonableness was significantly correlated with persuasiveness and self-containedness. This means a summary could sufficiently justify its thesis by selecting the most persuasive segments and also those segments which are self-contained and understandable and unambiguous. I encourage you to pause the video to look at this example of a high quality summary for an editorial with the above title. We see that most of the workers found out that this is persuasive, reasonable and self-contained and by reading one could, one could agree that this is indeed a relevant summary to an editorial that has this title. However, it does not exactly indicate the thesis. Now is an example of a low quality summary. Again, I encourage you to pause the video and read the summary to see how it is just a collection of sentences from the editorial which do not have any relation with each other, which makes it a bad summary. Therefore, we see that the list of quality dimension and the way we explained it to annotators was indeed useful and achievable to create a collection of high quality summaries. In conclusion, we tackle the question of what a high quality summary is by making three key contributions, a unified scheme, a corpus of 1330 summaries where 
90% of the editorials have at least three high quality summaries and 52% have all five. We provide a detailed analysis of summary structure, the various evidence types that contribute to argumentation, and the summary quality. Additional details such as the performance of automatic summarization models at extracting perceived segments and then comparison to humans can be found in our paper. Final takeaways. Our summaries are extractive in nature since we did not ask workers to edit or rewrite our summaries and we need much larger corpora that follow ideally our annotation scheme to train end-to-end -end models for effectively summarizing news editorials. You can find all the related resources and I thank you for your attention and have a nice conference.